Curity Curvy says, time to play this and that. All right, game on, come on. That's what I have. <laughs> so I allow myself like every couple of months, if there's a sale, birthday, sometimes I might spend like $500 and then I have to just make it stretch. I actually like that because I do get a little overwhelmed by choices. So, stash. Definitely, I am a PDF pattern girl because I want it right when I decide to buy this pretty much when I buy it. I just print it out. I have all my patterns here. They're not really in any terribly great order, but although recently I did buy some um, paper patterns and it was kind of fun to just cut out the pattern and boom, I was ready to go. Although I messed up cutting one of them and it was kind of a lost cause. So I think I'm still on the PDF pattern side. Oh, definitely cutting because I'm always printing out whatever size I want from a PDF. Muslin. Oh yeah, I don't usually have extra fabric for muslins and definitely don't have any more extra sheets. Don't know how that happened. I might use a cheaper fabric if I really want to, uh, if I'm not sure of the pattern designer, but otherwise, no muslin. Why do we always feel guilty to say that? Because we know we're supposed to. Oh, I, I live out in the sticks, so it's definitely, you know, shop online. I'm not very impressed with the thrift stores that I've seen downtown San Antonio, and that's the closest place to me, so shop online. All my Mii Maids go on a rack on hangers outside to dry, and plus I have a line in my garage because it's just always so hot in there. There's no um, air conditioning in there, so I'll just hang them in the garage. Mostly rotary, but if the fabric is too long, then I'll use my scissors because I only have the one cutting mat. I'd like to get a new cutting mat. I like to follow the directions. It's kind of like a Lego kit for grown-ups, only you need a little bit more skill. It's just like so many things in my life and probably in your life too, they involve these never-ending tasks that don't really have a finish line. And so I, I enjoy that. I, I also find, don't you, that I miss steps and then sometimes I miss it so bad that, and it's never the same for one shirt is never the same as another shirt. You ever notice that? The collar construction is different. And so then you end up unpicking it and I just hate that. So basically when I'm, when I'm reading the instructions, I'm looking to see what that maker or what the designer, what their plan was for how to put it together. Bias facings kind of get a bad rap because it just kind of flaps around on you. But you know, I think the intent for them is that, especially in a neckline, sometimes it's like a stabilizer. It holds the neckline a lot better than a binding will. And um, just for like the length of the garment, bindings tend to come unraveled in the wash and, and, and neck facings don't. I mean, that's just my experience. Hardly anything I sew has a facing, but when it does, I do it because I do like that, so. Zip fly. I've done a lot of zip flies. Look at this. I haven't figured out how to use my machine uh, to sew on buttons yet. I think I probably would, um, but I just do them by hand. The only time I've ever used sew-in interfacing is for silk because it's uh, kind of dangerous to iron on interfacing for silk. So often I'll just use the silk to interface the silk. <laughs> but otherwise, it's iron-on. Snip as you go. I don't need those little threads getting into my sh machine when I'm sewing. And also, don't you notice on the bottom edge if you catch the previous thread that's dangling around, then you have that kind of like mass of threads on the opposite side. And then sometimes it even can like 
uh, jam up your sewing machine. So I think it's probably a good idea to always snip as you go. I press as I go and I have the reason why is because um, a lot of times you're doing shaping with your hands. You know, sewing is a lot about kind of molding the fabric and pushing it the way you want it to go. So not only does it shape the fabric if you sew, get a sewing hand because oh my goodness, so much easier to shape any kind of curved seam with a sewing hand. Um, I use it all the time now. I, don't, I haven't had one for the whole four years I've been sewing and I finally got one and I'm like, why didn't I have one? <laughs> um, but also, when you, when you steam, you know, when you iron the, the stitch that you just did, it sort of like locks the stitches in. I think it kind of like actually shrinks them. <laughs> so I'm recommending press as you go. I sew every chance I get. Uh, every time, all, when my chores are done, all the meals are made, the dishes are washed, sometimes when the dishes aren't washed. <laughs> I don't watch TV, uh, but my boys and my, and my husband do. So when the boys are watching TV, you know, oh, when my men folk are watching TV, that's a nice way to say it, um, then I'm in here sewing or planning about sewing or writing about sewing or that's kind of my passion right now. Sometimes it's frantic, sometimes it's steady. Sometimes I need to stretch my projects out so I won't go through my fabric before I run out of budget. Because <laughs> I do a lot of sewing content, so I would like to just kind of do at least one a week. But sometimes I get in a frenzy and I do just kind of like sew up all my fabric and then I'm like, time to buy more fabric. This little area behind me right here, this is all the sewing space I have and it's in my bedroom so um, if I have to clean up after every project I don't always but I really try really hard to just pick it up I don't want my husband stepping on needles on the way to bed <laughs> so I have to clean as I go uh, probably if I had a bigger sewing room I'd make a mess and clean it later so thank you to the Curated Curvy for this great idea and it was a fun game to play. Hope you enjoyed watching me and I look forward to watching yours because I'd like to know a little bit about how you think.